So we've seen all of the different cases for factoring, but we've seen them in their respective chunks. So now if we start mixing these different types of factoring problems, how do we know what to do when? So 5.6 is kind of um, a summary and a combination of all the sections that we've talked about before. How do we factor just in general? What are the steps that we should go through? So the first thing should always be to look and see if we can factor out a greatest common factor, or a GCF. You're going to see that a lot. So anything that all of the terms share in common, we want to take out of everything to make life easier on ourselves. After that's done, we want to look at the number of terms that are present. If there's two, first question should always be, is it a difference of squares? If it is, we know how to factor that pretty quickly. If we've got three terms, we should ask if it is a perfect square trinomial. If it is, we can factor it fast. Or if we're going to have to uh, do the traditional factoring method, FOIL and check, or even use that AC method, if we have a coefficient higher than a one out on the front. But three terms, we can handle those. And if we have four, first thing we should try is factoring by grouping. So we want to factor completely all the way down to the end. And in the end, we want to check and make sure by multiplying that we actually factored correctly. We always have a check with this class. So we're literally just going to look at a bunch of examples. It doesn't tell us how to factor them. We have to figure that out for ourselves. So the first example, I need to look and see, is there anything common that we can take out of both terms? Yes, there is. We can take out a 5. And when we do that, what are we left with? Got t4 minus 16. Okay. And second, look at the number of terms. Now that we've taken out the greatest common factor, I have 2. First question should be, is it a difference of squares? It is. I've got a perfect square, perfect square, and a difference. So we know how it's going to break up t squared, the square root of the first one, minus, or plus, the square root of the second. Then the same exact terms, but differing signs. But we can't stop randomly. We have to keep checking to make sure we factored completely all the way down. So we want to look. Can we factor a sum of squares? It's never going to work. And I think it's helpful to actually see. Let's try to factor this sum of squares, just to prove to you that it's never going to be able to be factored. So what are my options? t plus 2, t plus 2, because I need it to multiply to give me positive 4. The other option would be t minus 2, t minus 2. That will give me plus 4 when I multiply the end bits. But checking to make sure, we always get a middle term in these cases. So let's see. t squared plus 2t plus 2t will give me plus 4t in the middle, plus 4. So it's not going to factor this way, because I get that middle term and I don't have one up there. My only other option is negative and negative, but the same story happens. We get a middle term that we don't have in our sum of squares. So sum of squares can never be factored. But what about this guy? I've got another difference of squares. So in the end, how is this one going to factor? I'm going to make some room. Get rid of my little arrow there. I still have 5 on the outside. I still have the sum of squares that won't factor. But this is going to factor into t minus 2, t plus 2. Now we got to ask again, are we all the way done? Yes. Broken down as far as we can go? As far as we can go as far as we can go, and we've kind of proved it briefly, and our greatest common factor that we took out in the beginning. Whew, all done. And what can we do if we're not confident that this is the right answer? Multiply it all out. Make sure we get back to our original binomial. So, just to make note, again, when we have a sum of squares, it can't be factored. Sum of squares can't be factored. Okay, and we've tried. That's always going to be the case. When I've got a perfect square and a perfect square and a sum in the middle instead of a difference, the differences we can handle. 
but the sum we can't. Okay, next, I have a polynomial of four terms. And is there anything in common in the beginning that we can factor out of every single thing? No. So, when I have four terms, how should we go about attacking these guys? Factoring by grouping. So, the first two together and the last two together. And we've got to ask. Common between the first two that we can take out of both is a factor of 2x squared. And when we do that, what are we left with? x plus 5. And I need these to match exactly, and they do. So what can I factor out of this term without changing anything? I can factor out a 1. All right, almost there. Common between these two terms that we can take out of both is x plus 5. When we do that, what's left over? 2x squared plus 1. And we always want to check when we think that we're done to make sure. Can we factor this any farther? So the smallest that we can break it down, smallest that we can break it down, and nothing is shared in common that we can factor out of these two terms. Done there. All right. Moving on to the next one. We're literally just practicing a bunch in this section. I've got a trinomial three terms. First thing we always want to do, is there anything in common that we can take out of everything? So between the constants, we don't have any. But between the variables, I can take out x cubed. And then we do that when we're left with x2 minus 2x minus 35. So, three term trinomial. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Nope, because this guy is negative automatically ruled out. So we need to factor traditionally and check by foiling. So I need to take negative 35, break it up into things that multiply to negative 35, add to negative 2. So what numbers do we need to be around? Close together. 5 and 7, some combo will give us 2, but I need it to be a negative 2. So what does that tell me about my signs over here? The larger one needs to be negative. And I've got a 1 out on the front. So I know it's going to factor into x and x. And we figured out the other two pieces. And this order doesn't matter. We could flip it around. It means the same exact thing. Okay, we got to look. Are we done? Took out the greatest common. And we broke down these factors as far as we could go. How can we check if you aren't certain that these are the correct factors? FOIL, distribute x cubed back in, make sure we get back up to the top. We always have a check. All right, next one. Anything in common between all of them that we can take out? No. Next step, how many uh, terms do we have? Four. So how should we start to factor? Grouping the first two and the last two. And we've got to ask, common between the first two that we can take out of both is a factor of p. When we do that, we're left with x plus y. Common between the second two that we can take out of both, factor of q. And when we do that, we're left with x plus y. So we want to look. Common between these two terms that we can take out of both is that entire quantity, x plus y. When we do that, what's left over? p plus q. And again, if you aren't certain that it's correct, what can we do? Foil it out. Make sure we get back up to our original. All right, a few more examples in this section. Looking at the next one. Is there anything common that we can take out of all three of those terms? No, but it is a trinomial, so we should always ask, is it a perfect square trinomial? So does it fit the qualifications? We've got positive everywhere, a perfect square, perfect square, and can we rewrite the middle term in terms of two times each of those individual pieces? 
So let's see, let's start to break it down a little bit more. What quantity do I need to square to get me to 25x squared? I need 5x in there. And on the back, what term do I need to square to get me to 4y squared? I need a 2 and y. So I need to be able to write my middle term as 2 times each of these chunks. So we'll just check and see that we can. So I've got 2, and I'll be left with 10, which I can break up into 5 and 2. And I have x and y. So we can group together x's and y's, it doesn't matter. And they're all being multiplied. So yeah, it's a perfect square trinomial. So how is it going to factor? I've got a sum in the middle, so I know it's going to be a plus. And I take one factor of my first term one factor of my last term. Done. And if you can see that it's a perfect square trinomial, we don't need to write that middle step. If you can go from here to there, go for it. All right, and if you aren't sure, what can you do? What is this actually telling us? 5x plus 2y times 5x plus 2y. Foil it out, make sure we get back to our original up there. Okay. But what do we have to remember with these? The really important thing. When I'm squaring and I have a sum or a difference on the inside, this is what it's implying. That entire quantity times itself two times in total. We can't distribute the square over a sum. Not going to work. We have to FOIL it out. Super important to remember for this class. All right, next one. As we look there, is there anything common that we can take out of everything to start with? So between our coefficients, they're all even, so at least a 2. And I can actually take out a factor of 4. Between all the variables, they don't share anything in common, so we have to leave them. But when I take out a 4, what are we left with? 2x4 minus 5x2y minus 3y squared. All right, so we took out the greatest common factor. Now we have a trinomial. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Nope, that one's negative, so that's automatically ruled out. And do we really want to do the traditional route? So I've got 2 and 3 on the back. They're both prime. But instead of guessing and checking, let's actually practice with that AC method. So what does that tell us? I need to take A and C and multiply them together. So negative 6 when I multiply A times C. And I need to break that up into things are going to multiply to negative 6, add to negative 5. So that's pretty straightforward. We need negative 6 and 1. When we multiply, we get here. When we add them, we get our middle term. So then what happens? We rewrite our middle term here in terms of these new ones. So what has more in common with 2? 6 or 1? I like 6, so I'm going to put those guys together. But the order doesn't really matter in this case. So negative 6x squared y plus x squared y minus 3y squared. So with the AC method, we force it to be factoring by grouping. So we'll take the first two together and the last two together and start asking those questions. Common between the first two that we can take out of both. We still have the 4 on the outside. What can I take out of these two? A 2 and how many x's? x squared. When we do that, we're left with x squared minus 3y. And in the second one, common between these two that we can take out of both is one factor of y. And we'll be left with x squared minus, you guessed it, 3y. Almost there. So common between these two terms that we can take out of both is that entire quantity, x squared minus 3y. So I still have the 4 on the outside. We can't forget to carry him along. 
and we factor out x squared minus 3y. When we do that, what are we left with? So when I take out this term, I'm left with 2x squared in the first. And when we take x squared minus 3y out of the second one, we're left with that little baby y plus y. And are we done? We want to look. We want to make sure that we can't factor out anything else that's common. So for my binomials, do I have a difference of squares? No, can't break that one down. And I've got a sum, and they're not even squares. So we're done. And how can we check? We can always check by foiling. Always going to work. All right, very last one. Almost there. Let's take a stab at it. So is there anything common that we can take out of both terms in the very beginning? No. So how many terms do we have? Two. Is it a difference of squares? It is. And we'll break it down a little bit. What quantity do I need to square to get me to a four? A squared. And what quantity do we need to square to get us to 16b4? I need 4 and b2. So we know that it's going to factor into one of each of these and differing the signs. But are we done there? Can we go any farther? First one is a sum of squares, so that's done. We'll make note of that. Sum of squares. So it's not going to factor any farther. But the second piece is another difference of squares. So we can keep breaking that one down. First one, again, is unchanged. We can't factor it any farther. But the second one now turns into what? A minus 2B and A plus 2B. Square root of the first and the square root of the second, differing signs. And the last check at the end, can we go any farther? No, we factored out everything that was possible. How can you check with all of these problems? After we factored, multiply it out. Make sure you get back to the original polynomial.